Hello and welcome to Pure Experiences Online Satsang. This satsang is an opportunity for everybody to meet and discuss the spiritual matters. And this is a part of our program, the Path of Knowledge program. Those who have any questions, any doubts about the Path of Knowledge, they are most welcome to ask their questions and get their doubts cleared here. So all questions are most welcome. Siddhant is asking, in one of your videos on existence, it is established that there is no such thing as prior existence, which I agree. But does that mean that things spontaneously appear? If I go for a walk and see a stranger, does that stranger has prior existence or is just spontaneously appearing? Yes, very good question. And according to our model of the illusion, yes, everything is already there in the universal memory. However, it is simply data. It is simply information or you can say vibration, patterns of vibration, highly structured. So the stranger is simply a pattern of vibration. The stranger has no existence as a person, as a human, whatever. But uh, there is existence of these patterns in the memory. And if you go deeper, then the, the memory or the vibration is simply possibility. So actually there is only potential for these things to appear. There is a potential for anything to appear. So ultimately there is nothing. And that nothing is the existence actually. The emptiness with infinite possibilities is the existence. And it is actually you. You are that. So obviously you are always present. Eternally present. There is no prior. There is no later. There is no time also. So you will need to climb down some steps into the illusion to even answer this question. Otherwise, from the highest point of view, the question has no meaning because there is no before and there is no after in the existence. Your nature is timeless. But uh, if you allow the illusion a little bit, then there will be some answers which will be false answers because the illusion can give you only illusory answers, nothing more. So we form a model and the model, our model says that everything is actually a memory and the memory has the potential to be anything, to store anything and whatever appears, appears through the laws of the memory, laws of the illusion. So what actually is, is simply you and what actually appears is totally different, which this intellect cannot grasp what it is and simply calls it a stranger or a person. There is nothing there except you and that you is completely empty without any qualities. Benjamin is saying, can one be in bliss if there is still a notion of good or bad attached to the sense perceptions? Yes, <laughs> you are always in bliss, eternally blissful. Even if there is a notion of good or bad attached to the senses or even if there is no such notion attached, no matter what the experience is, the experiencer is always in bliss. It will never go away because that is your nature to be blissful or bliss is your nature. What comes and what goes is not you and this good and bad and attachment and perceptions they keep coming and going. So you can be sure about the bliss. So probably he is asking about the bliss of the mind and there is no such thing. A peace, whatever they call as mental peace, there is no such thing. It is always a duality. Whatever you call as happiness, there is always a counterpart which is the sadness, suffering, depression, whatever. It comes in lots of varieties. So that is not bliss. Bliss is the background. And these things are uh, just like waves. So the mind is never blissful. It can be happy. It can be sad. But this is never blissful. And it can be inactive and it can be highly active, but it can never be peaceful. We should not confuse the word bliss with some kind of mental state or mental activity, emotion, thought or even pleasure. Bliss is not any of that. It is simply your nature when there is no activity, where there is no activity, not positive, not negative. That state is called the bliss state. That is the only state of the experiencer. Peace and bliss are same thing. Some people may ask, you know, why is happiness not bliss? That is what people think is bliss. It is not bliss because 
it is impermanent the definition of the bliss is it is eternal like we say you are eternally blissful we do not say that you are blissful sometimes and not blissful other times we never say like this and whatever makes you happy that is also impermanent and that is why the mental states are impermanent because they are dependent on something external to them and whatever is external to you is impermanent bliss is your nature it is not dependent on anything and that is why it is permanent so in ordinary language people take bliss to mean some kind of happiness joy but any spiritual seeker should know that that is the wrong meaning e- even in sanskrit and hindi the same corruption has happened the translation of bliss is anand but the ordinary people ignorant people they think it is happiness so you are never happy don't worry and you are never sad you are always blissful there will be some people who will say what is the use of bliss it's completely useless i want this other kind of bliss which is even if it is temporary i want it no no problem actually because whatever you call happiness is simply emergence of your inner bliss only and whatever you think is the emotion of happiness is simply a reaction of your mind to the bliss state and this can be easily shown that if there is a desire it does not get fulfilled mind enters a state of suffering as soon as the desire is fulfilled the mind enters a state of happiness why because something is gone not because it got something something is gone that which was troubling it is gone and that moment in that moment the inner bliss shines in the mind and the mind reacts to this thing finally i got it something like this and that makes you happy so you can have that happiness also but it is like loose coin loose change pennies compared to that which you are which sometimes shines in the mind so like we say in the hermetic philosophy kabbalion that uh, the experiences are not really dual they are one there is only difference of degree so whatever you think is happiness is only one when it becomes too low you call it suffering and when it comes to zero you call it happiness so it is always negative that means your happiness is also suffering but zero suffering and your suffering is actual suffering but actually negative happiness that is how they saw it and i completely agree because experiences are relative that's that is the law of relativity and the first one is called the law of polarity so how to make something polar obviously by picking its relative parts so your happiness and suffering is actually one state only the degree is different so if the degree is very negative you call it suffering i'm sad i'm frustrated i'm angry so on if it is not in that degree <laughs> if it is uh, not troubling you that much then you call it happiness which is simply shining of your background because there are no clouds of suffering the sun of the bliss shines for a while obviously it does not last for more than few seconds and people instead of actually tasting that bliss they react to it and you know laugh dance pride sense of achievement and as soon as this suffering is removed you see there is no happiness only removal of suffering temporary removal as soon as that happens a new set of thoughts they come that i did it finally i got it i am the best and then the negative thoughts also come what if i what if i lose it what if somebody snatches it from me what if something happens to me and i die before enjoying this thing which i got where is my lock i need to protect it first so immediately the suffering starts which is in the form of these thoughts and that's why i tell you that the mind can never be happy it is not meant to be happy who is meant to be happy you who philip benjamin is understanding my points forget about mind you know forget about improving it or making it happy or whatever you can only become detached to whatever it is doing and now everything is okay the ignorance is to think that the activity of the mind is fulfillment it never brings fulfillment it simply brings fruits 
some people are depressed by this thought that oh no there is no real happiness and this bliss is totally boring because it is not as exciting as the whatever the mind produces obviously it is these words are being said by the mind the ego the witness never says anything it is blissful it is happy always but a seeker is actually relieved by this knowledge that finally i don't need to be happy finally this burden of making this machine happy is gone it is my experience that when i learned this thing when i understood this thing finally that the happiness is an illusion then the desire to be happy go- was gone and the real bliss was seen for the first time the desire to remain continuously in happiness is actually suffering because it never happens and what are the ways to remain in that kind of state using objects people food drinks whatever you want you know whatever this machine is asking right now the sense pleasures and they never give you happiness that must be everybody's experience so when i when i learned this thing finally realized that it was as if i finished the big project of my life which was you know to become happy the project was finished it was done now there is no need to do anything more for the happiness <laughs> because, <laughs> because it is simply mental state illusory mental state which because of the ignorance appears to be your life goal vikas is asking how long ago number of years did you realize that happiness is found within and can you please comment on the quality of peace happiness over the period of time so i never count the years or time and your question about asking the time how long ago can you tell me why is that so important for you why are trivial things important for you when when the meat of the matter is served i mean if i tell you this many years is it going to make you progress somehow faster so that is called a shallow mind where the important stuff is totally discarded and the fluff that which is totally useless is held on so focus on the teaching the teaching is happiness is not found within or outside it is all illusion you are bliss nothing needs to be done to get it no i don't answer such questions you see because they waste your time your mind is asking for a leave from the knowledge there is a resistance in the mind probably let me ask something which is not so heavy and i'll be kind of freed from this burden of getting the knowledge so many people keep doing this so quality of peace happiness over the period of time as i said you see this happiness and peace that the mind wants is non existent so its quality is always zero no quality there and the bliss and the bliss and bliss and the peace that you are is always 100% pure best quality if you see that your bliss is changing in quality that means something is wrong because the bliss cannot change it is your real nature how can it change siddhant is saying if we use our criteria to discard everything that is changing bliss will shine yes you don't even need to discard it simply be detached from it that is enough discarding or rejecting also means that it is affecting you in some way paramjit is asking if guru puts his hand on your head in your dream what does that mean i had that experience last night i don't know it simply means that it can be a sign that you are in the right direction you are progressing you are on the right path okay i was in my dream i was in your dream no problem at all that is even better but you see nobody knows really the art of finding the meaning of a dream is simply black magic or you can say it is simply magic it can be anything if you ask somebody else who is a little bit negative he may say that okay the guru is now blessing you because he is departing forever he is going away forever so he is giving you the final blessing you see that is also a valid interpretation and somebody can say like those in the psychology people that your desire to be with the guru is too strong so that is why you are dreaming it you see that is the simplest explanation so paramjit you can have 20 explanations but nothing will be satisfactory in the dream is not important your waking state is important yesterday also i was saying this thing in the hindi satsang dreams are not important for a seeker 
Yes, he was desiring during waking state. That is all dream is. It is a reflection of your waking state. Siddhant is saying, I think some psychologists made make valid points about dreams. Yes, there there is a big section of the dreams, like 99% of the dreams that you can simply explain as garbage. There is nothing important there. Sometimes we are amazed by some kind of dreams that are that you cannot explain. And then we don't call them dreams. We call them visions. And what happens is ignorant people think that all dreams are visions. But no, all dreams are mostly garbage. You will need to evolve to a very great degree. You will need to become somebody great to have that kind of vision, that kind of experience, which is really meaningful. Right now, your waking state is also garbage. So, <laughs> there, is no, there is no possibility of uh, some meaningful dream there. Remember, your waking state is nothing but a dream. Is it good? You should start from the waking state, not from the dreams. Start making your waking state as awake as possible. Right now, it is just like dream, sleep, zombie state. So, that is most important for you. If you found a guru in the waking state, that is more important than seeing some flickering images of somebody strange in the dream for a few seconds. How is that important? So I think again there's some strategy of the mind that it tries to hold on to the important things instead of doing something which is really needed, which is really necessary, which is approaching a guru and then studying under that guru for your whole life. This is very difficult job. So what the mind holds on to is some images in the night time, fleeting images. Oh, I am progressing because I got this dream. So this is called laziness of mind. It is not a power. You are not really prog making any spiritual progress. If you simply dream, nothing is happening actually. You can say escape mechanism because there is a strong desire that I should be on a path, I should get a guru, I should systematically study now, I should do the practice as described in the tradition. But no, these things are too difficult for an average seeker. What is easy? Close your eyes and dream something random. So that's what the mind does. Simply reflects the desires in few seconds in the dream. And why do you give it so much importance? Nobody knows. <laughs> Nobody knows why do they give so much importance to the dream. Remember, if you are giving so much importance to the dream, you must be giving probably thousand times more importance to the waking state, which is also a dream. And that is why you are trapped here. So, should we not give any importance to the waking state? We should. Just like I said, this is more important. But what is the job of this state? What is the what is your job here? Is to wake up from the waking is to go beyond the waking state. That is your job. And that cannot be done by watching some dreams here and there. It is a hard work. And although I keep criticizing the dreams and uh, these things, you know, visions and whatever, I don't know why people keep asking me. Every satsang there is there are one or two questions that I saw this dream. Now please tell me how much progress I made. How extraordinary I am. And every time I tell them these bitter words. If you are not progressing in the waking, then dreaming is totally useless. At least you should do some efforts in the waking state. At least join a path. At least do the program or you know, do whatever your guru told you to do. What I'll do, I'll keep reading the books, I'll keep watching the videos and I'll keep imagining things in my dreams. And that is how I'm going to progress. So this, this is complete stupidity, isn't it? And that is why I call this the lazy mind. They don't wa really want to practice. They don't really want to progress. So they keep finding some ways to entertain themselves with the so-called spiritual things. Muni Singh, psychologists, psychoanalysts have made dreams very popular and appear meaningful. But that is only for the purpose of therapy, to deal with mental afflictions. Yes, they are like simply like blood test in case of the physical illness. So they, they try to find out something, what is wrong in the body using the blood test. And the same way, the kind of garbage that mind throws out in the night is useful for finding what is wrong there. It is diagnostic, yeah. Siddhant is saying, I still dream about failing in exams. Yes, 
useful for diagnosing the phobias and so on you see and nothing good for spiritual progress like i know some mechanics who can tell what is wrong in what part of the car by simply listening to the noise of the car they drive around for 5 minutes and <laughs> then they tell me what is wrong in your car same way the noise of the mind is useful in finding out what is wrong with it and it is always something like this like he said dan this saying some childhood phobias some fears some desires that are stored there which could not be expressed in the daytime but if you are on the path of knowledge do you really need this kind of diagnostic why don't you simply open the doors open the cupboard and look inside during waking hours waking state is it impossible actually if you are in awareness all the time the waking state itself is going to tell you a lot about what is going on in the mind what happens is people are not aware at all and this complete darkness inside it goes on and on and in complete darkness so they are unable to find out what is wrong with this mind and then these doctors and all they use these kind of tricks to find out hypnosis and pictures and who knows what random dots so these are the tricks to get something out of completely dark mind but if there is light of awareness then everything will be crystal clear in your view what is happening there it's all known clearly and that is why we don't have these terms like unconscious mind or subconscious mind <laughs> because they are simply degrees of ignorance degrees of unawareness a little bit of awareness and you can get 90% of knowledge of your mind just little bit you don't even need to be doctor also you need to know what is it that's all and just like i said in the videos also that once you know your mind you will know all the minds you will know everybody you don't need dreaming dreams and all kind of analysis to do that simply stay with them for few minutes you will know their past and lives and future ten lives it is possible nothing is unconscious nothing is subconscious simply the people are in complete darkness they don't even come to know what they're talking because you see complete darkness if somebody is talking to you there is a very little chance that you will really understand what they want what they mean what what they are saying are they lying or something like this so the ability to know others comes by ability to know your own mind how will you know your own mind simply watch become aware is it necessary no it's not necessary if you are progressing spiritually no problem at all because this will be dead in some years whatever you think is me mine or is causing problems will be gone very soon it is not necessary to know what is going on there and it is not necessary to improve it also because it disappears but what what about my next life it will reappear with the same tendencies so you need to kill your prey completely you see don't play with that thing just kill it the ultimate solution is to not to reappear here and the patchwork like you know repair of the indian roads that kind of work is to improve yourself by yourself i mean this mind they never improve you see next time <laughs> there is rebirth it again goes down the drain like in next monsoon the shiny roads they become potholes same thing will be repeated in your like next life unless you set your goal to be complete liberation from the human birth what will happen after that nothing unusual same mind but this time it will be a little bit manageable benjamin is asking is in mind continuously offering what you used to like or dislike but with awareness you won't grab or repel so the bondage is thin away yes simply becoming aware is the cure of the past habitual actions vikas is asking in your experience did the transfiguration from being the illusory individual to pure brahman happen gradually or did it all happen all at once i can't recall now what happened but uh, the knowledge is that you see you are always the brahman you are always the whole so what really happens is not transformation what really happens is destruction of the individual the individual does not become the whole 
the individual is destroyed and the whole appears from behind this dead body. Ego death happens, not transformation. And sometimes the individual is still there, only its illusion is seen, that it is illusory. And that much is the ego death, that much is the dissolution of the illusion or dissolution of the individual. Now what is known is that I was always the whole, I was always this whole existence. I can give you an example, you are you're watching a movie on the screen. Now after the movie is over, you realize that um, there is no movie, there is only screen. And when did this movie disappear and the screen reappear and the screen appeared? When did the movie transform into the screen? Never, you see, this never happened. The screen was always there. When the movie is playing, let us say it did not finish and you simply realize, look, this is the screen only. The movie is the illusion. Then also it is okay, you see. So thinking that this individual will be transformed into Brahman is complete ignorance. That means nothing was understood in the non-dual teachings. It is not a transformation, it is like uncovering. Now you can ask, you know, when did that uncovering happen? How did it happen? So on. Probably you are trying to get a method to become Brahman. So you already have the method, isn't it? The method is simply to adopt your path, start your spiritual study, go to the Guru. That is the method. And when it happens is not really important because you are always the same screen all the time. When it gets uncovered, do you want to mark it on the calendar and celebrate it every year or something like this? No, it is unimportant. The important thing to do is start the process. Take up the path. You will find that it was not a process also. It was grace. It all happens by grace. Sushant is asking, please once again shed some light on local memory. Local memory is simply a hypothetical part of the memory, universal memory, which is being used in the waking state by this creature. Right, whatever, like whatever happened today is stored there, whatever experiences happened there, stored there and so on. So what is the use of that? And the only use that I know of is survival. There is no other use. And why does it do that? Why can't you store everything in the universal memory? Actually, it is universal memory. It is not different from the universal. It is simply a demarcation in the universal memory. The system has allocated this much memory for the waking state to remain alive. That is all local memories. So as soon as the survival job is over, the maintenance job starts and the local memory becomes inactive because you know it, the senses are feeding it and the senses are somewhat inactive, not totally inactive, somewhat. It looks like they are inactive but they are not feeding the memory now, local memory. And that is why we do not remember what happened in the sleep because its, its use is only in the survival. Sleep state does not require it. So the creature is free to process some other kind of memories. And there you will find the larger areas of the memory they come into play. That is what is called the projected states. And you can even access the, your the causal memory and even bigger memories. And now you can understand the obsession of people for the dream states. They think it is something great. So yes, the local memory is the smallest memory that the creature is using, tiny memory. And then the dream memory comes, then the projected memories, and then causal memory and so on, greater memory. As you go away from the waking, the area that you can access in the universal memory becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. We also call it going higher and higher and higher because the words don't really mean anything. It simply means what can you access in the other states? How much area? How much part of the memory? Because you know area is also saying that it has a size or a shape. But no, the, these, these words are only helpers. It is completely RAM. You can access anything from anywhere. So why it happens that only in these states where you are completely gone the bigger memories become accessible because your waking state is actually bigger problem, not the other states. The other states have a bigger freedom. The waking state is the narrowest possible state. Now this is mind blowing because we consider the waking as the <laughs> highest possible, isn't it? Waking as the best. And just now I said, you know, give more importance to the waking 
not to the dream yes but the fact is that waking is the narrowest part of the not part of your experience and why is that because of this local memory it takes hold of the waking state as soon as the local memory becomes active you are in the waking state that is called waking up from the sleep in the morning and now it takes over the whole attention the attention span across the memories it is so strong that it takes over and whatever is coming from this five senses and little bit from the internal senses and even the tiniest part from the non physical senses which is your emotions thoughts and whatever that goes in the local memory and the whole attention is narrowed down to this much and that is done simply for survival survival demands this kind of extreme measure and you can verify what i'm saying and try to dream while driving the car or while hunting some animals or while working in your office look at the reaction of your boss or if you are a student try projecting in your classroom <laughs> the survival is challenged by this so this structure becomes strained in keeping it in a narrow band for almost 16 hours per day and that is a torture for a seeker isn't it why just like i said there is no happiness there is no fulfillment nothing is achieved in achieved in this human life so it becomes a torture unnecessary activity very very limited and that is why it is recommended to get rid of the human life not human life you know some people can go and kill themselves so we use the word get rid of the human wombs yonis do not take birth in human form again because it's a torture it's very boring also and then you are devoid of all that goodness of the universal memory where there are, there are infinite things to experience and that means you are not progressing the, the, the evolution is held up because of this local memory so there is there are more uh, functions of the local memory the first is survival of course but the second is collection you see the storage the karmic storage or the causal memory is updated every night from the local memory it is like a backup process and those who are in software will understand this process completely because the mind is simply an information system so whatever experiences were gained in the daytime or in the waking state they are then backed up in the causal memory so this causal memory never forgets anything but the local memory is very local you know you have forgotten what what you did one week ago or probably yesterday also it is so short term but the causal remembers everything that you have done since you were born and probably even something from many many lives also it is stored there it's all stored there so that is what is called sanchay or your storage so the local memory is the cause of growth of this storage and it dies with the organism yes because survival is over so its need is over so it dies it is destroyed but the storage lives on and that is why you know and and then then the new life experience life packet is allotted from the storage which is we which is what we call as the pre allocation and if you remove the local memory there won't be anything you see in the storage probably there will be something else but right now it is so much of it that the pre allocation is mostly about human life again and that is why there is a human birth again so your local memory is actually responsible for rebirth because it is the one that is feeding the causal now you can join your points you can join the points of the puzzle why people live alone in corners away from the society in the jungles in the caves why do they do that why do they sit there with eyes closed most of the time or they remain engaged in some kind of service or spiritual work yes so shanti is right cut down the activity of the local memory and you will cut down your storage probably after a long practice of many lifetimes there won't be anything to pre allocate and finally you are freed from this jaws of the <laughs> local memory this is the whole story and it is fascinating actually because you know it is interesting that we know this much also and i can tell you this is not written in any of the psychology book or the psychoanalysis or whatever like they are limited to dream analysis only <laughs> they don't know all these things you will also say how do you know all these things yes most of it is not based on my experience 
it is from the guru's word uh, mouth you know but it is so logical just like i said you know you can connect the dots and everything makes sense now so logical that you must accept it as the working model this will not fail this is not failed since many thousand years there is no chance that it will fail for few thousand years and if you are lucky you will be the one who made some discovery that you know validate something else invalidate some hypothesis here and there in the causal memories and so on in the process of rebirth and so on you can do that kind of research you see but how will you get the evidence that this story is true by your own experience try to find the evidence in your own experience look is is there a local memory try to find it look what happens to the local memory in the sleep state what happens in to the memories that are present in the local memory where do they go look at these people who can remember all the events of their lives all the dates and they can they need to look at the whole city for 5 minutes and they can draw everything in that city and these kind of people you know they are they provide the evidence somehow in them the boundaries of the local memory have broken they must be some kind of seekers in their past lives vandita is saying local memory is stored like cookies yes you can say that they they are a good tool to keep this body alive keep this interface working nicely so you can dig down in, into this very interesting topic and what is the use of going into so much depth you see knowledge is the starting point from here you can start applying this knowledge and instead of sitting in the cave and so on you see don't do these things they are extreme things but cut down the unnecessary that is why we say these things cut down the unnecessary how to do that by simply by being in awareness what is awareness knowledge of who you are how to get that knowledge path of knowledge see everything is so straight forward by being in awareness you will cut down the unnecessary you know why why should i cut down the unnecessary because you know the nature of the local memory and this trap of the causal memories and so on and then you will be freed from the repetitive existence and what is wrong in this repetition <laughs> nothing is wrong but the evolution is held up some people can think that is also okay but we don't we are logical people you see path of knowledge we want progress so this this is the way to progress forward knowledge is the starting point i can tell you you know i can order you that you know cut down these 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 things from your life including your wife and you will be very happy but you will not know why i told you to do that so i need to tell you the whole theory i need to tell you the whole mind and then because you are so intellectual you will be pleased finally now i need to progress this will be your decision so this is the path of knowledge you see you cannot order people here anjali is saying can you please share some information about tom spark i don't have a lot of information but i heard him saying about this thing and it is his own project and where is this spark and what he is doing with it you know so now this is the interesting thing he did not buy property and started making a park there for kids and all no he has created his own world in the non physical domain now people will be you know surprised well, how is it po- even possible so this is the this happens eventually inevitable you will also do it probably you won't call it park or something <laughs> but you it will be your own world and we call it the guru lok in sanskrit so tom spark is nothing but a guru lok he has created it in the non physical somewhere you know astral in the occult language and he invites people there so anybody who is following him is allowed entry in that park and that much i know that that's all i know how, how what is there i don't know really i never went there the interesting things i know about it because we are doing this since many thousand years yes resort like park yes there you know just like any any good hill station pleasure activity we are doing this since thousands of years and many of the gurus have their own worlds what is the use of this kind of park can somebody guess you know having fun is one use yes you can have fun there you can enjoy that thing which your guru has created siddha this thing where there there are some people there who can help with spiritual progress yes explore universal memory yes 
so shant is saying experiment and evolve very good yes so knowledge is another um, you can say function which you can be taken out there in the guru lok and free from all the distractions that this kind of world offers you and you can progress there very fast siddhar is saying healing and progress yes healing why why healing you see because even the dead people are taken there if you died from something you know because of something which was not so good then it is almost guaranteed that the next birth will be not so good so what do they do these people you know hopefully your guru himself will come and pick you but you need to be somebody important to be that to be served like that but there are helpers yes there are volunteers who will pick these dead people and specifically from the path that they are following the tradition and the path not random people from the street no we don't pick them they will say like this so anybody who has done some kind of effort in walking on any kind of spiritual path they are picked if they die suddenly or something bad happens and they are taken to that world then they recover there and instead of the knee jerk kind of rebirth they get a little bit of time to decide what to do in the next birth the, the biggest actually function of the guru lok is to prevent the rebirth let us say if you have a desire to drive a new shiny car you know i am giving just very random simple example and your causal body says yes sure go ahead back into the human world the death world you know this is called the death world earth and you come here and you work for 20 years 30 years you get the car you drive around and so on and it amounts to nothing but you have wasted a whole lifetime for that what the guru can do is you know pick you up just after you die and can sense that you have this desire okay he can immediately transport you into part of his world park where you can drive 20 cars at the same time <laughs> and in one day you are over it is done so you, your one birth is saved so this concept is not new even a newbie tantric is taught how to create yes you won't be able to create the whole world right now but you will be able to create a room isn't it it's possible this uh, this kind of worlds they are artificial you can say shelters only for seekers nobody else can go there and what kind of seekers those who are favorite of their gurus and who is your who is the favorite of uh, the guru those who want to progress isn't it that is all <clears throat> that is the criteria you don't want to progress you just want to listen to the stories no entry in the guru world but you are sweating you are working hard you are even giving away like you are serving then you become the favorite of the guru and obviously you get free pass in the guru world and not only that he will teach you how to create your own so that you can do the same thing not only gurus every deity has their own world who are these deities who are these devas they are humans only they were humans they progressed so that is why i said you will also do it nothing new we all are going to do it okay siddhant is saying tom has said that people can come there after death yes yes that is the whole purpose of this thing you see you can go there right now also without dying but uh, you will be sent back you can go there as a tourist jayesh is asking are we talking about projections or there is something else to these worlds they are a world in themselves just like your world vikas is asking there seems to be a minor disagreement between the two the uh, tom's philosophy is not really non dual philosophy that is why not minor there is a major difference tom is mostly on the experience side although he holds the consciousness as the fundamental and so on you see but that is where he leaves the non dual philosophy and he is more into the occult side now that is why he is doing experiments setting up the worlds and teaching you remote viewing and healing and so on you see and that is also very useful but yes the advait fellows will disagree at some point there because he has his own theory so it is saying isn't all the affliction of the mind there because it is devoid of pure love it totally depends on what do you mean by pure love you see you and me are when this is pure love isn't it so if somebody is devoid of this thing that means they are devoid of this knowledge that we are all one and yes the ignorance is an affliction in itself actually it is the biggest affliction so if you interpret 
this question like this yes everybody is afflicted because they don't know who they are now if you take the meaning of the love as the emotion and the need you know the social need the emotional need and the uh, intellectual need and the physical need that kind of love then yes now you can you have entered the psycho psychology again yes lack of love causes lots of afflictions you can get the money yes you can get the position in the society you can get your objects clothes and jewelry but uh, you cannot get the love of the other that is the problem in this world and that gives rise to this need and that causes many many distortions in the mind so ordinary people are afflicted yes but even seekers are afflicted by this thing and no matter how how much i tell them that look you are the love you are the one in everyone no 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 they don't understand because you know the mind has the need not the experiencer the experiencer has no need at all you see it is free from desires and all these activities the mind has this need and if just like any other need if this is not fulfilled or this is suppressed or worse case they get the hate instead of love you know many cases are there where people are hated bitterly and they become like mad crazy people afflicted so why is this desire most important you know compared to all other desires this is fundamental there are three fundamental desires the security growth and reproduction these things these three if nobody loves you what will be your security zero yes love is needed growth means feeding is it food shelter if nobody loves you not even your mother is it possible no reproduction i need not say it so what is the most important need now yes to be loved and what is the most lacking thing in this world love the result is everybody is crazy who is <laughs> who is free from all these things the one who knows his true nature i am love and so i can only give it i am the source not the sink i am the giver not the receiver those who know these things they are free from all afflictions instantly they become free because not now you are not begging for your love you are not actually begging for your security or your food or your reproduction that is all taken care of because you are not all that which this mind body does and instantly this burden is dropped this need is gone then you see you you realize that i am the source of the love because i am the one in everyone and so the fountain sprouts from you instead of you becoming the drain <laughs> where sometimes few drops they are drained you become the fountain of love and you start giving instead of asking demanding and that makes the mind healthier so very good question by sweety so those who like one line solutions the solution is to give not to take if you are doing the give and take take and take only then that is selfishness not love as soon as i see a dependent relation that means a bond between two people whether either they are forced to live together or they are you know emotionally bound so much dependent on each other i can immediately see the lack of love there because it means total independence freedom not bondage so highly demanding people highly possessive people or those who like relations of all kinds and so on these people they lack love most and you can see their behavior is totally afflicted not normal those who are helplessly dependent on each other they both lack love and they're both demanding that's why they never get it and then they are businessmen kind of people you do this much for me i'll do this much for you plus free gift and <laughs> this is the most hopeless condition in this society and the biggest example of that is the marriage a marriage is a sure sign of lack of love somebody who is full of love will never marry anybody so you see this path of knowledge it turns everything upside down and if you tell these things to ordinary people they will think you are crazy yes they are crazy and those who you know they are standing upside down and those who are standing right side up they look like upside down that is the issue with this society today so as you grow in your spiritual path as you travel you become less and less social 
that is the side effect you won't be able to talk to anybody you won't be able to sit with anybody it does not mean that you don't love but you know they, <laughs> you cannot tolerate that thing when you seek this company of seekers then you seek the company of the guru because only the guru understands you nobody else and then you go in the solitude because nobody wants anything if you want to give they will start exploiting you that is the problem in the society so the situation is almost impossible to cure and the only way is to grow out of it you need to evolve out of this society and then service is the best expression of the love and best service is serving the knowledge you can give money you can give food you can give anything you want that you have but that is considered as the inferior kind of service the superior service is serving knowledge otherwise what do you do is you create an army of beggars demanding people exploiting people i mean the people start exploiting you because you are selflessly giving but if you serve knowledge it's completely safe if they take advantage of you they will become more knowledgeable that is the good thing and now you can connect the dots here also what are we doing actually Wh- whatever we are doing is simply love there is nothing else here going on as soon as you recognize that the other is me the only thing you can do is service so it should start with the self service first you should serve whatever you think is me and obviously the witness does not require anything so you start with something which is closest to the witness which is your mind you serve it you know <laughs> make it healthy wealthy rich intelligent then you serve the body because you know that is the vehicle then you serve the society other people because this body needs to live with these people we are social animals and then you serve the environment because without it nothing will survive now you come to know the importance of service why it is so important in the spiritual field pratib is saying today is love day it is every day is love day <laughs> are we not doing this every day pratib is also doing the same thing pratib is saying i love is enough you comes later yes the you is not there isn't it you is also me so i love always i it is selfish which is totally selfish gram is saying i think you have said modern temples are not as powerful as ancient ones do you think what sadguru is building is authentic like the old temples dhyanalinga temple what can i tell is you know only the words that i heard from his own mouth and some devotees you you can call them devotees but they are practitioners they are the seekers so if you believe him yes this has the power this is the authentic one and how will you come to know this thing okay pratib has the testimony many people have told me that yes this is authentic and you know they don't know much about you know that thing that how many chakras they they could perceive and so on but sadguru says it is consecrated up to the six chakras and so on who knows how he did that but if you want to experience you know not experience experiment if you want to experiment what the deities looked like how they felt like what was the effect of the deities that were consecrated consecrated for spiritual growth etc etc then your best experiment is this dhyanalinga temple created by sadguru and they i know there are some more but they are top secret i don't know the location i don't know their location i don't know who made them because they are private just like your private swimming pool you don't allow others to swim in your private swimming pool they don't allow others to practice in their own temples which they have consecrated so yes the this is the public one this is the first one that is public in recent time pratib is saying experiment inside then you will know what's there in dhyanalinga and devi temple and he's saying other than you i cannot talk that stuff is so rare yes it's rare even the experiences that you get there you won't have any language to express them uh, because i know the experiences of um the worshippers of devi he created i mean he created it devi also not only this lingam and he is selling the devi <laughs> that is being sold like an object but that's okay you know that is the occult path ling bhairavi yes you're right and people have told me the experiences they had with this devi which was made by 
produced by Sadhguru. And sometimes they cannot tell what what happens there. But I know what it is doing. I know what Sadhguru is doing. I know what this the handling a temple is doing. But that should not be told in public. Yes, Pradeep is right. People will get scared if we talk openly. And uh, then you will need to face Sadhguru some someday, you see. Then what will you do? Where are you going to run? So it is our duty to keep uh, the occult secrets secret. But you can understand a few things about these things. That You see, the deities were created by humans, not the other way. They were created for our service. What is happening? Humans are serving these things. It is like after, let us say, 3000 years, people will set up a temple of Google and they will start worshipping Google. And then somebody will tell them, look, this was created using this technology and it was a search engine for your service. And probably they will kill you because it is their religion now, Google religion. So this has happened and Sadhguru is trying to reverse it. There is knowledge, there is technology to create things like this. It is lost. So this is this my interpretation is based totally on whatever he says because who else can say about these things? Who knows about these things apart from Sadhguru? Hardly anybody. Those who do know they do not talk. You need to go and experience it. That is my recommendation. If nothing happens there, then it is nothing useless or you can say beautiful thing to behold. But <laughs> it is but if you are sensitive, then it will speed up the spiritual growth. Graham is saying, I feel like even little statues of deity I have bought on the street have power if I treat them with respect like a deity. Yes, you can create all those things, you see, simply by your intention. The magic is within you, not in the statues. So here we are going to end our satsang. Thank you everybody for attending today's satsang. And rest of the questions, if any, will take in the next one.